Fans have been wondering if star actor Mark Harmon will be coming back to the show since word spread that NCI's Origins would be airing on October 14th. Fans are obviously looking forward to his return to NCI's after 19 seasons and over 430 episodes as the character Leroy Jethro Gibbs. This has also caused a lot of discussion about why the beloved actor, who had been a regular on the show, quit so suddenly. Let us look at Mark's life. Why did something terrible happen that kept him from being on the show, and will he ever be back on NCI's? Thomas Mark Harmon was born in Burbank, California, as the youngest of three children. He went on to become a big TV star. Tom Harmon, an announcer and football player who won the Heisman Trophy, and Elise Knox, an actress, model, and artist, are his parents. Kelly Harmon, one of his older sisters, was an actress and model who was married to auto billionaire John DeLorean and became divorced from the late singer Rick Nelson and married the late actress and painter Kristen Nelson. Mark was introduced to the entertainment business at a young age because he was born into a pretty wealthy family. As he grew up, his family history gave him some knowledge about the entertainment and media business. This made him more creative, and he started to think that playing would be a great job for him. But he did other things as a child besides playing. He was also making news on the football pitch because he was naturally very athletic, but it wouldn't be fair to just praise Mark's obvious skills and ignore how hard he works. One time was when he worked as a lifeguard in Laguna Beach, California over the summer, near where his family had beach homes. He got up early with his dad so he could run on the beach for an hour before going to work. They have run as many as 45 miles in a single week. He later said that this activity helped him a lot in getting ready for football practice. All of these different sides of Mark were able to grow at Harvard Westlake School where he improved his skills thanks to the school's strong academics and focus on the arts. Mark could do many things at school that would help him decide on a job path. Most importantly, he was able to improve his work ethic and discipline. After finishing from Harvard Westlake School in 1970, Mark went to Pierce College in Los Angeles and got an associate degree over the course of two years. Mark was still playing football as a kid. During his time at Pierce, big football schools made offers to him after his sophomore year in 1971. Jim Pendleton, Mark's teacher, wasn't shocked that people were interested in him. In fact, he said he is a good runner, a tough option runner, and a good thrower. It's not easy to find that mix. Mark's dad also said that they had about 15 scholarship offers at the time, including ones from Michigan and UCLA. He also said Mark was thinking about going to UCLA, but also other places. Mark was looking for a college with good academics and football teams because he wanted to become an orthopedic surgeon. In the end, he picked UCLA over Oklahoma, even though Oklahoma had won second place in the country the previous year and UCLA had won last place in the pac -Kid. Close friends and co-workers were shocked by Mark's choice because he is the son of Michigan football hero Tom Harmon. They thought it would cause him and his parents to fight, but that wasn't true. Mark said that his father told him that the only thing that made him want to play was sacrifice and putting in time and effort. He also said that even though he was happy, he didn't push me. I choose to play football because I want to. As soon as Mark got to UCLA, he was named the starting quarterback and stayed there for two years. Not a surprise since he led UCLA to an upset win over Nebraska in his first game, ending the Huskers' 32-game winning streak as the defending national champs. As quarterback for the UCLA Bruins, he led them to a number of important wins. That win, though, put his name in the school's history books. Mark's dad called the orange and black games on TV while Mark was in college. This put him in a funny spot when it came time to criticize or praise Mark's play on the pitch. But there was no reason to worry him. Mark always did his best. Under Coach Pepper Rogers' wishbone offense, UCLA had a 1-7-5 record in his two years as quarterback. He won the National Football Foundation Award for all-round excellence during his last season. After having a very great college football career at UCLA, he was given the chance to play professional football by the New England Patriots. Mark wasn't interested, though, because he thought he wasn't good enough to go pro. The second, more important reason he went to college was to learn and make the most of what he learned. It wasn't like he went to college to become a jock. He wanted to get the most out of his schooling, as shown by the fact that he graduated with honors and a BA in communications. Because he was so interested in understanding the subtleties of speech, he thought about becoming a lawyer or an ad man after he graduated in 1974. Eventually, he got his first job in business as a merchandise head. But he was about to face a test he hadn't seen coming. Tom, Mark's father, is one of the most famous football players in history, and his blonde, beautiful mother was also famous. Even though he was the child of a popular person, which should have made his life easier, it wasn't. He didn't just want to focus on one career path, so he also chose to try acting. He knew that his acting career would not depend on how well his parents did in school or how well he did in football. 
Mark took acting lessons for five years to show how dedicated he was to his job choice. This was different from many other sports who went on to become actors. Mark had a different plan. He took acting very seriously and often went to the movies to watch Gary Cooper, Paul Newman, and Montgomery Clift work. His sister Kristen's in-laws, Ozzie and Harriet Nelson, helped him get his first starring job in 1973 in an episode of Ozzie's Girls. It got him a foothold on TV, even though it was only in one show. In 1975, two years later, Mark was in a number of TV shows, such as Emergency and Adam 12. It was only one episode each, but he got more of them the next year when he was cast in Del Vecchio and got the part of Robert Dunlap in the TV movie Eleanor and Franklin. The White House Years They put him in the running for an Emmy for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Miniseries or a Movie for this part. Mark's business took off after getting the praise. After working on a number of other projects for two years, he got the part of Officer Mike Breen on the show Sam. He finally showed up in more than one episode, and he did so seven times. He hadn't had a run like this in over four years. In the same year, he played Captain John McIntosh, an honorable Union Cavalry soldier, in three episodes of the miniseries Centennial. The next year, he got a part as Deputy Dwayne Thibodeau on the action show 240 Robert, which aired in 1979. The show was about the jobs of the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department Emergency Services detail, but it only lasted a few episodes. Even so, Mark had been in 13 episodes of the show, which was cool. Mark would have a few guest parts on other TV miniseries in between these hard-to-get long-term roles, which helped show how versatile he was. He got a steady part on the primetime soap opera Flamingo Road in 1980, where he played Fielding Carlisle, Mrs. Fairchild's character's husband. This show had 38 episodes with Mark in them. The show was canceled after two seasons, even though it got good numbers at first. After the show was canceled, Mark was lucky enough to get the part of Dr. Robert Caldwell on the 1983 TV show Saint Elsewhere. He was in the show for almost three years before he quit in early 1986. Mark was getting more attention than he ever thought possible because he was an actor. People Magazine called him the sexiest man alive in January. He became the face of Coors regular beer because of this fame, and he was in ads for the company. In the same year, he made a short return to episodic TV with the show Moonlighting. He then played the lead role in the 1987 TV movie After the Promise. The next year, he was in films with Sean Connery, Meg Ryan, and Jodie Foster, among others. Dickie Cobb, a police detective in Chicago, was his next regular TV job. He played the part for two seasons on the NBC show Reasonable Doubts. During 1995, he played a private detective on the ABC show Charlie Grace. There was only one season of the show. He then went back to group medical shows on the TV show Chicago Hope, where he played Dr. Jack McNeil from 1996 to 2000. After two years, in May 2002, he played Secret Service agent Simon Donovan on the West Wing for a story arc that had four episodes. It was the second time in 25 years that he was nominated for an Emmy Award. The person who made JAG and NCI saw him on the West Wing at this time and had him be a guest star in two episodes of JAG in April 2003. That's when Mark first appeared as NCIC agent Leroy Jethro Gibbs. Mark also played Gibbs on the CBS program NCIs when it first aired that September. NCIS showed how the personal and work lives of Naval Criminal Investigation Service Major Case Response Team Special Agents were linked who looks into crimes involving members of the U.S. Navy, Marine Corps, and their families. Mark met up with three co-stars from Chicago Hope while he was on the show Rocky Carroll, Lauren Holly, and Jane Brooke. He has also been a producer and senior producer since 2008. Mark got the 2,482nd star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on October 1, 2012. After two years, he chose to start Wings Productions, a production company, to make NCIC Orleans. A lot of fans thought this would happen because he had been nominated six times for the People's Choice Awards for his part as Gibbs. In 2017, he won for Favorite TV Crime Drama Actor. But in 2021, in the fourth episode of the show's 19th season, called Great Wide Open, Mark's character Gibbs went to Alaska with NCI senior field agent Timothy McGee to work on a case. Gibbs chooses to stay in Alaska instead of going back to Washington, D.C. at the end of the show. And staying there to keep working for the NCIs, it was clear that this was the cleanest way for the show's writers to write Mark's exit as a regular. Because they had seen Mark's face on TV for almost 20 years, fans were shocked. They needed to know why he was leaving. He talked about his choice by saying, it wasn't so much a decision to leave as it was the right time to pull away a bit. I loved the plot they came up with and how they portrayed the character, and the show went on. Some people think Mark's age had a lot to do with his decision to leave. He told someone else in an interview, I've always trusted the writers here. They're always being challenging here. The character keeps changing. He is getting old. Some of this is something I deal with as an actor as well as the role. 
Someone asked him if he would play the part again, and he said, I get asked that a lot, but I've always let the writers do what they want to do. He did say, I'm not retired though. My best guess is that the person lives in Alaska. Stephen D. Hinder, the executive producer and director of NCIIC, even gave hints that Mark might be back. Mark will always be an important part of the show as an executive producer and close friend. Being true to our characters has always been our North Star, he said. That truth has always guided the stories we tell and the places our characters go. Fans of the show who have seen it for a long time may have noticed that Leroy Jethro Gibbs is always a possibility. Mark might have been taking some time off to spend with his family. They got married on March 21, 1987, to actress Pam Dauber. They had two boys together, Sean Harmon, born a year after they got married, and Ty Christian Harmon, born in 1992. Being devoted to family and wanting a quiet, private life are important to Mark and Pam. That's why the family likes to stay out of the public eye and rarely appears with their children. They have only been seen in public a few times, like when Sean played young Gibbs in several NCI scenes, Mark thought back to the first time Sean had the chance to play. I always remember the first time they said they would do something Young Gibbs like here. Sean had just finished school at that time. Tony Warmby, the director, asked, can he come in and read He Did It On His Own, and I'm proud of him for taking his work seriously and how he approaches being an actor, that's what he has decided to do with his life's work. Both of our boys do great work, and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them for getting up every day and trying to do that. The big event was also enjoyed in the family and Mark talked about how his wife reacted when Sean went on camera. Being a mom is what she loves most and she's proud of that. Well done to both of our boys. We hope they made good decisions and are continuing to do well every day, you know? We are getting more and more proud of both of them every day. This is a part of that. Since Mark and Pam have been married for more than 30 years, it's clear that the values they share have played a big role in their long marriage. One of those ideals is bravery, which they showed on a crazy night at their California home in Brentwood. A car that had gone off the road because of a missed turn caught fire, and Mark didn't think twice about it. He used a sledgehammer to break the windows of the burning car because two 16-year-old boys were trapped inside and needed help. One of the teens was badly burned, and the other was only slightly hurt. But Mark acted quickly and saved them from what could have been a terrible end. When first responders got there, the boys were taken to nearby hospitals to get care. The fire service says that Mark's quick action probably saved their lives. This showed another side of Mark, he is a man who is willing to risk his life for other people. Even though he has won many performing awards over the years, this event will always be remembered as a testament to his bravery and character. Mark had to deal with the death of his sister Kristen in 2018. She was 72 years old. A Facebook post on May 1st by her daughter Tracy Nelson said she had died quickly and too soon of a heart attack. Two of her parents had already died in 1990 and 2012. She was the third member of the Harmon family to die. Mark isn't letting these losses get him down. He said, I need to be challenged. I like it better when I'm busy following through on his promise. He turned his attention to other things, sometimes not acting during those tough times. He was a producer for a new CBS show in 2018 that was based on John Sanford's best-selling Prey books, which have sold over 30 million copies around the world. He also read the audiobook, A Japanese-American Spy Hunter, The True Story of Pearl Harbor, which came out in 2023 and was co-written by Leon Carroll Jr., a former NCI special agent. For those who are curious about what Mark has been up to in 2024, Mark will be the show's narrator on NCI's origins and will also be in the first episode. Mark would talk about how his character, Gibb, got his start as a special agent at the brand new NCI's Camp Pendleton office in the show, which would launch on October 14th, 2024. Mark has also talked about what he thinks about his part in the new show. I'm just glad to be a part of it. I'm kind of far away from it all because I'm not there to make any big moves or anything. I'm only there to help. How can I help? Also, it's fine if you need my help. It's also fine if you don't. And everything is going well so far. He also said, I don't know what to say, other than I'm glad to be a part of this team, I'm also okay with taking a step back and letting this group do their job. It took a lot of time and rooms to find this group of people sitting in front of you. At the time, the star also said that he was impressed with how shoots were going so far after only a week. I love this group and what I've seen on set and in the dailies. In all honesty, fans are hoping that Mark will do more than just be the storyteller in the new show, which is something the directors say they're okay with. Mark has done a lot for television that should not be forgotten. In this case, a coworker said, what NCIS has done beautifully and I have to say that we're here because of all the great artists who came before us. There have been guest stars and actors who have come and gone. Some are still alive and some have died. And this show has helped a lot of people get jobs. It's also a big honor to Mark Harmon, who ran this show so well for hundreds of episodes and kept it true to its values and principles. 
One thing we do know about Mark is that he wants to leave behind something important. As he said, I was taught to put in my best effort. It was okay as long as you could look at yourself in the mirror and say, I gave it my all. You would look bad if you gave less though. Fans of Mark Harmon can say that he always gives it his all, whether it's in his hobbies, football, parenting, marriage, or playing. 